Well, as you can see, getting kind of crowded in here right now. Don't have a whole lot of room to walk. And I was trying to get on the back side here today and finish getting those cucumbers strung up or strung up. And I kept walking all over these carrots. So I figured what we're going to do is dig up a few carrots, see what we made, if anything, and give me a little bit of room to walk. Looks like made some little babies right there. Can't win them all, but I got to get an A for effort anyway. That ain't that ain't too bad. And what this would do is give me a little bit of room to walk behind here without stepping all over. Uh oh, here comes a big bunch right here. Got some midget carrots, but. I'll take them. Not too bad at all. What I'm working on right now is finishing filling up the bags for these tomato suckers. Uh, the Rutgers that were done started January 1st. When I went ahead and potted them up, they came out a little four inch pots, so they weren't very big. So what I did was just, I rolled these five gallon grow bags down a little bit and put the transplants in there or the suckers whichever way you want to call them and what I've done today is went ahead and started cutting the lower leaves off the little uh, leaf stems they're not serving much purpose these things get right leathery like on the bottom uh, if there's no fruit down there for them to cover up you know to hide from the Sun so they they don't serve a whole lot of purpose and what I'm doing is go ahead and finish and filling up the bags there's a couple right here that I've already done. Just roll the bag up and finish putting your soil mixture in there. This one too. This one. And here's one that I haven't done yet. I'm getting ready to do. And you can see how the roots have already come out right up at the top. Same thing right here. And this whole mass is nothing but you know small fine roots. It's just growing all the way through it. So what I'm going to do is just come in here and roll this bag up like so I couldn't do that before I cut the leaves off you can see where I just cut all these leaves now I've got room and you see the space down in there and this is my soil mix right here which is basically composted uh, horse manure peat moss and perlite and we just take this and finish filling the bag up and that will give some more room for roots to develop up along the rest of the stem and help feed the rest of the plant as you can see now, I've finished topping off the rest of the bags, got everything rolled up and filled in with another five or six inches of the good compost uh, peat perlite mixture. And as I showed in another video about planting tomatoes deep, the reason I do this is I'm putting them in a grow bag and I can't really stick them eight or ten inches down in the ground. I can only go so far because they're sitting in a tub of water. So what I'm doing is kind of building them up like like you do with a potato. If you want to grow a potato in a barrel or something like that, you plant it at the bottom, and then as the potato grows up, you add more soil to it uh, to cover up the potatoes that grow along the, uh, the little stem there. But this is a little bit different, and what this will allow the plant to do is give it another five inches of really good soil to develop roots in and allow for a whole lot more nutrient uptake to the vine and should make for some really really healthy plants if you look at the stem right here I mean you don't for the size the, no taller than this plant is right here that's that's a humongous stem and something else I did I'm sure somebody gonna wonder what this piece of plastic is hanging up here so when I started these diva cucumbers when I put them in the bags and I got them lined up right here they didn't seem to want to handle the sun very well. I had eight, now I've got six. I lost two in one day. They just wilted so bad they didn't come back. So what I decided to do was just hang that piece of plastic up there to cut down on some of the sun a little bit and give these things a chance to go ahead and develop a more root structure where they can take up enough water 
to withstand what the sun's doing to them in the daytime. And they're looking pretty good. Hey, good morning, folks. Uh, given the fact that I've been growing yellow straight neck squash here in the greenhouse, uh, it's a typical summertime squash that requires some type of pollination, whether it be from bees, wasps, or whatever, whatever kind of insect, and I don't have them in the greenhouse, so I have to do the pollinating myself. Now, there's a couple of things I'll just go over real quick. This is the female right here. You got a big, this is the ovary part in the center. And you see the fruit attached to it. The female will always have the fruit, whether it be a squash, cucumber, pumpkin, melon, watermelon, whatever it is, uh, attached to it. Right behind that is a male. And as you can see, the male only has the stem. It doesn't have any kind of fruit behind it. Here's another female right here. And coming over this way, there's a few more a few more males. There's one right there and that's another one. So what I'm going to do is cut the males off and use them to pollinate the females. Okay, this is the male that I just cut off inside of it you see all the pollen and there's nothing but a stem behind it and what I do is just take a pair of scissors and cut the blossom part off and these little side pieces that stick up and get it cleaned up looking like this so it'll fit right down in the inside of that uh, female blossom and you just take that thing and stick it in there and work it around like that that way you're getting a lot of pollen down inside of it and that thing should be ready to go you see how the pollen actually stuck inside there that thing is well pollinated and ready for that squash to go ahead and grow I've got a couple more that I need to get done but while I'm thinking about it I'll go ahead and show you that we have actually been having success doing this and we'll pick a few of these squash. We'll take that one right there. It got a little bit big on me. One right there. Come out here and see what we can find. Look down in there. There's another one. One more behind there. Well, I went ahead and washed these squash up, rinsed them off good, and as you can see, there's some really, really nice looking squash there. Um, one of the things about this, you hear on the news all the time about the bee population going down and people just not getting the uh, vegetables pollinated like they used to. I don't know that I would want to do this in a, you know, 100 foot row or something like that, but for people to have a container garden, or a little raised beds out back, you know, something small in the backyard where you've got some squash growing and you notice that you're seeing blossoms and then they just uh, they shrivel up and die. What you can do is go ahead and try this hand pollinating, uh, get you a male and match it up with that female. Make sure you get some good pollen in there and that should really, really help you start going ahead and making some more squash. Well, let's see if we can fix this up with a tomato sandwich or two. We're going to start with some Duke's mayonnaise. I don't believe it's nothing no better than some good old Duke's. And since I got to open all this stuff up and cut a tomato, dirty up a knife, rather than make one sandwich, we're going to make two. And this will 
this will tide me over a little bit till dinner time, about seven, seven thirty, something like that. Being as how the days are getting longer, and I got more stuff to do, somehow or another, I end up outside till it gets plum dark, and then by the time I come in and get me a shower and get comfortable, it'll be seven thirty, eight o'clock. But even though it's kind of late, you still got to eat. So, now we're going to grab us one of these pretty majors over here. Got this one out of the refrigerator because I like them cold. And just cut this little piece off the end. Drop that in the trash can. And then, look at that tomato. Ain't that thing just pretty? Juice just running out of it. I like mine a little bit thin. Mm mm mm. Ain't nothing like a fresh tomato sandwich. As long as it's a real tomato. Now, that stuff you're getting at the grocery store this time of year, I don't call that a tomato, so I don't know what kind of experience you'd call it either when you try to make a sandwich out of them. I call it a bad day, but I reckon anything to eat is better than nothing. We've just been fortunate and blessed to have come up with this greenhouse and figured out a way to make some of this stuff grow during the winter time. Now, hit it with a little salt, put a little pepper on there. And I like a slice of cheese on mine. Throw this cheese on there real quick. I told you we're going to make two of them. You can do two about as fast as you can do one. As good as they are, you could probably eat four. So, there's my two tomato sandwiches. Nice and neat. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is good. And wash it down with one of these real diet drinks. I don't drink the ones that have light on the side of the can anymore. So, trying to save a little money and look after my body a little bit. So, I'm going to go ahead and put me some string up. What I got is four four bags here of Brandywine Reds. So there's actually eight plants and just like the other ones going up the strings I'm going to keep the suckers off of them. Kind of like all these little things popping up in here. It just They small enough where they just snap right off. All I'm doing since I've got these sitting on a 2 by 12 is just putting a little a little fence staple between each one and I want to use that to anchor the bottom of the string as you can see now I got my strings run up basically all you do is just go in and loop it around that fence staple in the bottom and then just run your string straight up and tie it around that purlin up there and once you get that done you're ready to put your little clip on and basically that's this little thing right here a little tomato clip and what you do is get it snug on your string and then you're just going to come in here like this and it's going to clamp and now you've got that plant all set up and ready to run <laughs> 